This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. We turn to El Salvador, where thousands took to the streets Wednesday to protest President Nayib Bukele's growing consolidation of power and a new law making El Salvador the world's first country to recognize the highly volatile cryptocurrency Bitcoin as legal tender. Protesters in San Salvador condemn Bukele's plan. They promised to do things differently, and they've been worse. We are here in the midst of the pandemic because this dictatorship is deadlier than the virus. We aren't going to stay home with our arms crossed because our parents and grandparents and uncles died for a country free of dictatorships and corruption. We are still seeing that. Now it is our turn to resist. Protesters in El Salvador also criticizing the recent court ruling that paves the way for President Bukele to run for re-election in 2024. We're joined now by Jorge Cuellar. He's assistant professor at Dartmouth College. His forthcoming book, Everyday Life and Everyday Death in El Salvador, his latest article in the New Left Review, is headlined, Bid— coin sanctuaries. Uh, Professor Cuellar, it's great to have you with us. Explain the significance. Why has El Salvador become the first country in the world to recognize Bitcoin as legal tender? What does it mean? So the turn to Bitcoin, Amy, is actually quite a surprise to a lot of us. There's no reason why Bitcoin should be at the top of the government agenda in a moment of pandemic, of water stress, of food insecurity, of depressed wages. But the big sell uh, by Bukele around Bitcoin has been that it will lessen remittance fees to the country. As you know, Salvadorans are one of the uh, largest populations that remit money to El Salvador, which is a, a quarter of GDP. And so one of his arguments for the turn to Bitcoin has been to lessen those commissions that uh, entities like Western Union or MoneyGram take on every remit sent to the country. Um, but as you can see, people are very suspicious of this. And in fact, it's been shown that those remittance uh, commissions are actually higher in Bitcoin than they are with traditional uh, wire transfer services. Jorge Cuellar, could you also explain uh, how this rollout uh, has been problematic? Uh, there's uh, the Chivo wallet. Uh, people in El Salvador have been offered an incentive of $30. But explain what's happened with the rollout and also the implications of uh, numbers of people in the country who don't have access uh, uh, to cell phones to use the app. And what demographics, what groups in the country will be most at risk as a result of Bitcoin uh, being used as legal tender? Yes, so the rolling out of Bitcoin in El Salvador and using Chivo Wallet, this app that people can download from smartphone stores, um, is has been very glitchy, has been has has often been down for uh, peak times during the day. And it's been a frustrating experience for many people who have tried to sign up and use it and experiment with the app. Um, ATMs themselves have uh, fall, have fallen all the time, repeatedly, um, leading to a lot of user frustration um, and showing that Bitcoin is not only an unstable currency, but even the infrastructure that El Salvador has very imp improvised um, to the uh, up to the September 7th rollout um, has been very piecemeal and uh, um, uneven. Right. And so what this has done, in effect, the $30 uh, in Bitcoin that has incentivized folks to sign up has been uh, has been something that many sub -poor, sub poor Salvadorans and common people are interested in. It's, it's a it, it functions as a kind of economic stimulus in times of pandemic. And so folks are very eager to sign up. Um, and, but in fact, the, the system has been so erratic that um, that it hasn't really worked. But what I'm seeing uh, based on popular use is that people are signing up for the app, using uh, getting their $30 that, are, that is offered by the government to sign up, and are actually just withdrawing it. And so they're withdrawing it into U.S. dollars and going out to the restaurant and getting some food, buying some groceries, and actually just leaving the app to the side. Because again, the recurrent suspicion 
of, of, of Bitcoin and, and Chiba Wallet, which is shrouded in so much ambiguity um, and lack of uh, educational campaigns by the government to really tell people what Bitcoin is, what it means, how it impacts daily life. Um, and how it sort of uh, intersects with daily activity. Um, and this has been uh, one of the most challenging or one of the most challenged uh, sites where the social movements have, have drawn attention to Bitcoin as being more of a ploy for uh, supporting uh, illicit accumulation, narco money, money laundering, um, and for, for foreign investors who are pr the primary audience of Bitcoin um, uh, to come into the country and invest and, and transform this kind of monopoly immaterial money into real estate, into business, um, into other forms of, of currency and wealth um, that is inaccessible in general to uh, the common Salvadoran person. Jorge, what are the environmental implications of Bitcoin, and how does it fit into the right-wing philosophy of President Bukele as he tries to consolidate power? So uh, the Bitcoin rollout actually uh, comes after uh, various constitutional moments of erosion, where he stacked the Legislative Assembly, where he's dismissed magistrate and constitutional judges. So the Bitcoin project actually is shadowed by this kind of authoritarian consolidation, which has been part of his kind of command economy, where, where he seems to be the one giving orders and everybody has to follow along. Um, but in terms of the environmental implications of Bitcoin, it, it operates through uh, uh, through computers and through high energy use, and so one of the one of the big pitches that Bukele made initially to foreign investors to come and uh, bring their Bitcoin to El Salvador was that they would offer cheap energy, and this cheap energy Bukele claimed was going to come from volcanic geothermal. Uh, 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 sites that he hopes to build around the country's volcanoes. Already, geothermal is used in El Salvador in very uh, uh, uneven ways, but uh, he's he's trying to ramp this up, and 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 this will have uh, you know environmental impacts in the country in, in a place that's uh, extremely deforested is living through. Um, high levels of water stress um, and, uh, and and is part of the question of food scarcity that often drives things like migration. So Bitcoin is at the at the heart of uh, uh, ecological concerns for El Salvador. We want to thank you for being with us, Jorge Cuellar, assistant professor at Dartmouth College. We'll link to your article in the New Left Review headlined, headlined Bitcoin Sanctuaries, his forthcoming book, Everyday Life and Everyday Death in El Salvador.